Hi, it's Mark from the Antique Wireless Museum, call sign AE2EA. In this segment, we're finally going to get started on making the modifications to this mid-1950s AM broadcast transmitter to bring it up into the 160 meter AM band. So let's get started. We'll start with the oscillator circuit where I've added a buffer amplifier board that takes the low level signal from my VFO and boosts it up to a level that's compatible with the tube-based oscillator. I just run it right in where this uh, crystal oscillator used to be plugged in. So all I had to do was make a small jumper cable that uh, has two banana plugs on the end. The banana plugs just happen to be the right size to plug into the socket where the uh, crystal originally plugged in. This oscillator has a uh, 807 tube, a uh, fairly uh, big tube to find in the oscillator, and then uh, the oscillator uh, feeds its signal out through that connection to the uh, transmitter. I also uh, added a small wall wart 12 volt DC power supply to power up the buffer amplifier since no 12 volt DC was available on the transmitter. The plate choke has adjustable tap coils and these are necessary so that you can uh, maximize the drive coming out of the oscillator in order to keep the buffer stage that follows the oscillator uh, running in class C. So we'll uh, test the voltage output in the original tap position and see how it looks. We'll use this signal on the scope as our baseline signal and then we'll move the tap to see what the new signal level is, see if there's an improvement. So we'll unscrew the uh, existing connection on the uh, plate choke and uh, short out one additional turn on the choke in order to lower the inductance and thereby possibly raise the frequency response of the plate choke. But when we look at the oscilloscope, we see that the signal is much weaker than it was in the original position, so we'll move that back. Well, it's time for a reality check, so turn on the filament and plate supply. And this transmitter has an adjustable meter. You can select and measure various parameters. We'll turn it into the buffer uh, uh, grid setting and that reading should be from 80 to 100 percent or 120 percent. It's about 115 percent so that signal is good. The PA capacitors in the tank circuit will have to be selected uh, to see if we need to add an additional capacitance above the variable capacitor. It looks like we don't need to from that chart. So these two uh, fixed capacitors that we could put in that circuit will eliminate those. Uh, we'll also have to select the number of turns for the coil in the tank circuit and interpolating this chart it looks like we need to short out 23 turns. So I just move the uh, tap on this coil over a few positions to short out 23 turns to get the correct inductance for the uh, tank circuit. Uh, this can be adjusted later on if I need to. We'll, we'll see later on. I also need to select the uh, inductance for the L network that follows the tank circuit. Uh, this L network uh, will transform the impedance of the tank circuit to the impedance of the antenna. I only needed uh, two turns for this, so I shorted out all the turns except for two on this coil. And we'll also need to select the capacitance on the L network. Once again, I interpolate on this chart. It looks like we need about 4,000 PF to make this work. Uh, there is, in fact, a 4,000 puff capacitor, so I just take the two other available capacitors out of the circuit and only use this one capacitor along with the uh, tank coil. Now, in this circuit, uh, following the uh, uh, L network is an inductor that only serves to compensate for any capacitive reactants in the antenna. Now that I made these adjustments, I should mention I also had to adjust the grid choke for the PA, but I didn't feel a need to film that. We'll start by turning on the filament supply. Let that warm up for a while, and then we'll turn on the plate supply. The first adjustment I'll need to make when I start this up is to bring the, uh, the tank circuit into resonance. And I'll do that by minimizing the PA plate current reading while I adjust the PA variable capacitor. Turn on the uh, PA power supply.
and we'll uh, bring the PA plate current down to about 250 milliamps. Plate voltage is about uh, 1,400 volts, and that'd be right within range. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, power output at this point, uh, it actually looks quite good. We're about at uh, oh, 270 watts, which would be right within the range we want to operate at. Looking at some other parameters, we see that the oscillator cathode current is at 80%, which is okay. Buffer grid current is good at about 90%. Buffer cathode current, though, a little bit low, but uh, reasonable. Um, the uh, PA grid current is very good. Uh, the PA cathode current for the first tube is good. And the PA cathode current for the second tube also looks to be very good. Um, now I'll turn on the modulator and we'll modulate the signal from 0% uh, modulation up to 100%. Take a look at the oscilloscope and see how the trace looks. Starting with no modulation to speak of, I'll increase the modulation level and work towards 100%. I'm running at about 1000 Hz right now. So the modulation looks good at 100% back it off and bring it up again. Looks good. We'll uh, swing the frequency on this too to see how that looks. Down to about 400 Hertz and we'll bring it up around, uh, see how high we can go before it diminishes. It looks like around 6,000 Hertz. We start to lose a little amplitude, but that's pretty flat. And you can hear that modulation transformer sing. I'll also do a frequency sweep looking at a trapezoidal pattern. Starting at about 50 Hertz, I've got some phase distortion. But as I swing it up to 500 hertz, it's pretty good. And then I'll continue to, uh, from here, sweep up to about 6,000 hertz. And you can see the phase distortion uh, increase again. But overall, that's not bad. Well, that wasn't so bad. It looks like after a 20-year break, the mighty BTA-250M is going to be on the air again on 160 meters. That is, after I complete a base loading coil for my antenna. You know, if you're interested in early radio, vintage electronics, consider becoming a member of the Antique Wireless Association. You can just follow this link up here to learn more. And thanks for watching.